Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at this little beastie which is the Kodar CR70A HF receiver um, essentially it does up to 30 megs um, AM and uh, uh, as a BFO so we'll also receive uh, CW and SSB this is an early 60s British design it's all valve this is the Mark 1 um, which is point to point wired and they don't have a great reputation from a sensitivity and selectivity point of view but I wanted um, to get my hands on a, a genuine British uh, shortwave receiver for the shack um, to do a little bit of shortwave listening um, with that uh, uh, through some valves so um, call me old fashioned if you wish but I'm pleased to get this it's a nice example it's nice and clean actually just given the case a little bit of a clean up I've had a look inside there are actually only three electrolytic capacitors um, one was a 25 microfarad which I had in stock which I've already replaced and the smoothing capacitor is a 16 microfarad and it's the dual cam version and I've managed to obtain a 16 plus 16 um, from Cripplewood Electronics and I mentioned their name because I actually ordered this at 20 to 4 yesterday afternoon and it arrived this morning which is a Saturday um, in Royal Mail so fantastic service Cricklewood Electronics thank you um, so I thought right I'll have a go at fitting this but the radio is actually working okay and is drawing about 22 and a half watts according to my Variac monitor um, so uh, obviously it's definitely the original capacitor from the 60s and so definitely it'll be past its best so I thought what I'd do I, I would examine the the waveform on the two halves of the um, of the smoothing capacitor and just see what we've got before I replace it and see if it uh, it makes a, a notable interest a no notable uh, improvement uh, it should do I suspect and then we can also of course then measure the capacitance of the um, of the original uh, capacitor and see uh, how much it's uh, and which it's changed over time. So there we go, let's get to it. Okay well here we are with the cover removed from, uh, from the Kodar CR70A and as you can see um, quite nice and clean behind. Um, total of uh, five valves there. Um, this is a full wave rectifier, there's um, a couple of double triodes and there's a a converter valve here so it's a relatively um, straightforward single super head um, and this is the capacitor that um, needs to be changed certainly looks original I couldn't get one of the same diameter and as you can see uh, that's quite a bit bigger so I'm not going to be able to make use of um, that bracket but I think I've concocted a way of being able to hold that uh, uh, on there okay so um, there's probably room underneath to actually uh, to actually do it in fact the answer, the, actually there is room underneath but um, I would actually quite like to um, leave that space free for whatever reasons the, um, bottom, of the bottom of the capacitors there so there certainly would be room here to do it but I'm going to um, install it on top that's that's my plan anyway so we'll get the solder and iron warmed up and uh, we'll make a start okay well here's the circuit diagram for the, the code R and the two capacitors that I'm uh, changing are these two here. So you've got this uh, voltage dropper. You've got well, you've got the um, full wave rectifier valve, and straight off uh, the cathode of that valve, you've got the first half of the 16 microfarad, and then you've got a 2k resistor, and um, then another 16 microfarad. So these are the two test points I'm going to use to see what uh, what ripple uh, uh, we're getting. So first of all, I'm going to I've got the, the set up and running so we'll uh, we'll take some measurements okay sets um, sets up and running been on for about five minutes this is the uh, the base of the capacitor here and that gray resistor there I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera I'll just twist it around a little bit so you can see it. that gray resistor there uh, is the, the 2k resistor in between the two halves of the capacitor so this bottom tag here is the the cathode of the rectifier valve um, so we're going to probe that and getting about 280 volts according to the um, the meter and I'm getting uh, a ripple waveform which I'm now going to uh, capture on the uh, 
on the oscilloscope and uh, you can have a look at the waveform here and as you can see that that ripple uh, we're on 5 volts per division there so there's roughly um, a sort of a 10 volt uh, ripple on the on the superimposed on the DC voltage uh, and that's on the the cathode side of the um, the capacitor and if we now go to the opposite side of that resistor the other half of the capacitor and straight away there's we're down to about 230 volts now and the the ripple is considerably less I actually have to um, turn up the sensitivity of the scope um, and I'm now on 500 millivolts per division and 500 millivolts is probably the total amount of uh, of ripple we've got there so quite a considerable improvement coming across that uh, dropper resistor so with those two numbers noted I'm going to swap out the capacitor now and we'll see if uh, if there's any notable uh, improvement I have to say currently it's looking pretty good anyway okay well here we are with the new double electrolytic capacitor in position and I've uh, got the old one here as you can see I'm quite a bit um, different diameter but I've managed to fit it in reasonably well. Um, I've just had this capacitor on the tester and actually I get six, about 15 microfarads for one and I get uh, 20 microfarads for the other with an ESR of about um, 1.6 ohms so um, doesn't seem to test out too badly but I'm a lot happier having uh, replaced it. So what I've done is I soldered a, a little uh, tag onto the end of the common connector and I've drilled a fresh hole there, I couldn't quite use the original hole I'm afraid drilled a fresh hole through there and underneath that's the, that's, that was the old hole I'll just point so you can see, that's the old um, hole there and the new hole here with a 3mm um, screw in, I'm sure it would have been probably 4BA before and the capacitor here, um, what I've done is I've put some heat shrink around the two tags and soldered two wires on so there's no danger of them coming into contact with the um, uh, with the chassis. Uh, now I've done, uh, again I've checked the voltages, they're actually almost identical and as you can see here this is the probe for uh, this part here and this is the probe for that part there so we've still got that um, pretty much the same amount of ripple uh, looks very similar and the same for the other side so it would seem this capacitor was doing a reasonably good job but I'm um, uh, obviously you know this is uh, the best part of 60 years old so it definitely um, needs to be out of here so uh, good um, next thing to do is to look at some of the the resistors particularly the ones that have been exposed to a, a high voltage or have been quite warm and see what they're like the good news for me is that these green capacitors here they're mostly cathode bypass caps um, I've unsoldered a couple and measured them and actually they measure um, correctly they're, they're all 100 nanofarad and they all check out somewhere near that and they appear to be some kind of plastic encapsulated capacitor so um, so that's good uh, that's the other electrolytic I replaced there um, and I'm sure these ceramic discs are going to be fine so I just need to take out a few of these um, these resistors now particularly ones uh, in the plate or in the cathode uh, bypass and we'll and we're just, uh, we're just see what um, kind of results we get and uh, whether we need to change some of those out so um, pleased with that uh, that went in um, as expected and hopefully going to um, give a few more years service OK, well here we are with the underside of the chassis of the Kodar um, CR70A and uh, what I've done, I've actually managed to pretty much replace all the components that were slightly out of spec um, and the ones that I've left I've actually checked and they're OK just noticed I've missed one there, i better check that um, so yeah, a few, few replacement uh, resistors here and there one under there um, couple here um, but actually most of them were, were quite reasonable and even some of the ones I've replaced weren't that far off um, so hopefully that's going to uh, have improved the performance somewhat um, the only other thing I need to do now is really check the alignment and the problem I've got there at the moment is the top of these coils 
which you probably can't see terribly well on the video. Um, but the top of those coils, they've been um, had something in them, maybe looks a bit like varnish actually, just to, to seal the um, top of the, the slug. And I really can't budge the top ones. The bottom ones are alright, um, but uh, the top ones I'm afraid uh, aren't, so I'm going to have to... I've tried two or three things and nothing seems to dissolve that, so I'm going to have a, another think about how I might do that. I have to say, it um, does seem uh, okay, but it would nice be nice to just check and, and, and peek up, peek up if, uh, if required, but uh, we'll have to see. So, that's looking good. It's had a good clean and I'm um, going to get it back in its case and then uh, we'll have a listen to it in action. And so now I've had a go at a line and I haven't been able to find anything that will free off the uh, top slug uh, slugs for the two IF transformers. So what I've gone for is that the bottom slugs actually um, uh, are, are movable. So what I've done is I've gone through the alignment procedure and I've actually checked those and I couldn't improve uh, what was already there which suggests to me the alignment hopefully is, is pretty good anyway. I don't want to risk damaging um, the, the slugs in the top of those transformers obviously. So then I've gone ahead and uh, set up the four bands and uh, once I've got my head around the fact that on the circuit diagram it's, um, it gives you a coil here which is the oscillator but what it doesn't really tell you is there are four of those. Um, and of course there are, there's one for each band. Um, and when I'd worked that out, um, I was able to understand what on earth this lot was here, because it was a little bit confusing. So essentially what we've got here is one, two, three, four bands. The uh, slug at the top adjusts the oscillator at the bottom end of the range. The trimmer capacitor here adjusts the top. So I've managed to adjust um, all four bands so that they're pretty much aligned from a frequency point of view. These were very fussy, these capacitors, so I'll give them a, a bit of a clean with some alcohol just to clean up the um, the contacts on the where the screw moves up and down, and that seems to improve matters. So that's all aligned, so I'm going to get it back in its case, uh, let it warm up for um, maybe an hour or something, get to get up to its average temperature, and then we're going to see what the, the drift is like. Um, and hopefully... Um, Got myself a nice little valve receiver there. So, um, right, we'll get it uh, back in its case and then we'll have a look what the drift's like. Okay, well that's uh, Shannon Volmet on 5 MHz um, and the Kodar seems to be receiving that okay. It's dark here now, so it's not um, great conditions for 5 megs, but during the day it's been, been receiving it uh, quite a bit better than that. But uh, once she's warm and she's nice, comfortably warm on top now with the valves, um, it's reasonably stable and doesn't drift too badly. Um, Certainly if you want to do some listening to sideband, let it warm up for 30 minutes first would be would appear to be good advice. Uh, but she's working nicely. The alignment I did on the, the four oscillator coils, although I spent quite a lot of time on it, actually I think it's paid off because the, the dial uh, indications do line up uh, quite well with um, the stations now. One of the reasons I wanted to use uh, Shannon Volmet is that uh, it's obviously a very stable single sideband transmission uh, and it gives me a good idea of how much drift is going on with the radio but I've been copying uh, sideband signals in the 80 meter, the 40 meter and the 20 meter ammeter bands today without without any difficulty. So um, I'm pleased with that. Uh, I've got a much better HF receiver, um, a much more modern ICOM um, fully synthesized SDR um, radio but I wanted something that was that was valve that was British that uh, I could be a bit nostalgic with and actually the CR70 has fitted the bill rather well I've got reasonably low expectations I've not heard great reports about them but I've done my best to get it 
as, as, as good as I can get it with the component changes and a little bit of fettling and tuning up and I'm actually pleasantly surprised with um, with, with how she's working so um, that's a nice little addition to the shack and um, it's dual purpose with winter coming here in the UK obviously it's going to generate a little bit of heat to keep me warm too um, so there we go Kodar CR70A thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed it please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way it'd be great if you could subscribe I've got lots more stuff coming and um, videos on valve technology on much more modern technology and also on some bas basic electronics as well so um, stay tuned and uh, hopefully there'll be something to interest you um, thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time